Is the love word? Oh, blessing and honor and glory. Is she worthy? Okay, all of this. Good morning, good morning, and once more, good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And I want us to just start by thanking God. Uh, Lord, we just thank you today. We thank you for making today a possibility. We thank you that it is still an option for us to be here with you. We are very grateful. And we know that as you've made it possible, so to our lives will be blessed this morning. We pray you take preeminence in our midst this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. We want to burn for you. Oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. Lord, we want to burn for you. Oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. We want to burn for you. Oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. We want to burn for you. We want to know your heart. Yes, we want to know your way. We want to know your heart. Oh, Lord, we want to know your way. Oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. Lord, we want to burn for you. Oh, Lord, would you set our hearts on fire for you? We want to burn for you. We want to know your heart. 
Oh, we wanna know your way. Oh Lord, we wanna know your heart. This Monday morning, we wanna know your way. TTW on fire for you. We want to know your heart. Oh Lord, would you set our hearts on fire for you? We want to know your heart. Oh Lord, set our on fire for you. We want to burn for you. Yes, Jesus, would you set our lives on fire for you? We want to burn for you. Oh, we thank you, Savior, for you set our lives on fire for you. We want to burn for you. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus, for you have set our hearts on fire for you. And we yearn for you. We want to know your heart. We want to know your way. Lord, we know we are. We want to know your way. We want to know your heart. Yes, Jesus, this morning, we want to know your ways. Oh, we want to know your heart. Lord, we want to know your ways. We want to burn for you. We want to know your heart. Savior, we want to know your ways. And burn for you. So we pray, Lord, burning us. Transform us. Oh, Lord, burning us, transform us, set us on fire, on fire. Oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. We want to burn for you. Oh, Lord, would you set our lives on fire for you? We want to burn for you. We want to know your heart. We want to know your ways, Jesus, we want to know your heart. We want to know your ways. Mm. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Lord, that is who you are. That is who you are. You are Yeshua, 
Dia Mashia, that is who you are. Yes, Jesus, that is who you are. Oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. Lord, we yearn for you. Oh, oh, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you. Oh, yes, we yearn for you. We want to know your heart. You want to know your ways, Jesus. You want to know your heart. We want to know your ways. That is who you are. There is a place that we love to dwell. It's the presence of the Father and all the host of heavens gather to worship him. Bowing down before you. But there is a place that we love to dwell. And he's the presence of the Father. And all the host of heavens gather to worship him, bowing down before you. Lord, we worship you, bowing down before you. Yes, we worship you, bowing down before you. Lord, we worship you, bowing down before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being part of us this morning. I'm excited to be here with you. We thank God for life. We thank God for keeping and sustaining us. God has been faithful. And we are grateful for the privilege for us to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't start the live Instagram anyway. So we are grateful for God who has brought us today in his presence. We thank God for what he's doing even in our midst. I just want to appreciate you who has taken out time from your busy schedule to be with us this morning for fellowship. We are not taking it for granted. I really, really do appreciate you. And I am so grateful. We are live on Facebook and on Instagram. On Facebook is the Transforming Woman Fellowship. And on Instagram, it is ttw.fellowship. So either of the platforms, please, you could go ahead and share the live video. Please, please. That is the best you could do for us. Go ahead and share the video because you never know who might be interested to listen to the word of God this morning. So just go ahead and share it and let God do the rest of the work. So while you're doing that, I just want to officially welcome you again to the Transforming Woman Fellowship. And in short, we call it TTW. The scripture we have for this man is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, which says, But we all we unveil faces, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, 
just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so what is this fellowship all about? It is an interdominational gathering of women regardless of their age or status for fellowship to behold the face of our Master Jesus Christ. And in the course of that, they evaluate themselves daily, not for condemnation, but for spiritual good. It is a place where women are trained to thrive, understand time, season, and stand the gap in the place of prayer for themselves, their family, and the nation. We use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help. We gather for now every Monday to worship, share the word of God, and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender and a place where we have only one objective and no alternative, which is either Jesus or Jesus. Our mission, our vision, sorry, is to gather our mission is to gather to fellowship with the holy spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for god they are conscious of their life in the secret they are ready to fulfill purpose enjoy marriage and promote godly parenting our values are love humility compassion giving excellent self-control and sacrifice that said you are welcome again to today's fellowship it's been our month of the secret place and today is the fourth the fourth Monday in the month of July. And it's definitely going to be our last Monday for fellowship because next week, Monday, we are not going to be having a live fellowship because of the conference we're having this Saturday. So on Monday, we're not going to be here. The message is going to be online for people to consume because I know it's going to be power packed and so people need to consume of it. So next Monday won't be here. So this is our last. Um, should I say it shouldn't be a last because we are meeting on Saturday anyway, but for this theme, um, the sacred place, today is the fourth Monday, by God's grace, we have had the privilege to be talking about it. I'm sure that even as we are rounding up with this particular theme today, that the Lord has given each and every one of us one or two things that we can use, you know, from the topic to be able to help us grow in this year, 2024, 2024 and beyond. But before we go ahead, I just want to use this opportunity to invite a woman out there for our 2024 Women's Conference. Wow, we just want to thank God the week is here. It's going to be taking place on saturday the flyer is right on the screen for those of you who are watching from facebook it's our annual women's conference 2024 and the theme for this conference is oil of distinction my god we are expecting to see what god has kept for us with the theme he has given to us this year so the date is july 27 it's this coming saturday we start at 5 30 p.m cs still time prompt so please if you are around oklahoma you want to be in this location 6009 northwest expressway okc okay 73112 6009 northwest expressway okc okay 73132 it's the zip code we will be expecting to see you and we are very confident that it's going to be a life transformation experience for you and you are not just going to recover from the conference in a hurry and for those people who are actually been with us for a while on social media if you want to partner with us towards this program please we give an opportunity for that if you want to sow into this program you can do that either through cash app which will be texted on the live video through cash app which is dollar sign the transforming woman do, do we have 2020 there dollar sign the transforming woman i guess so right dollar sign the transforming woman is our cash app and if it's true zero it's nz marian03 at gmail.com you could just text that information the zero is n that's my first and last nz marian03 at gmail.com please you could put that on the comment section just in case someone would like to use that information and what we have on the screen for those of you who are watching us from um for those of you who are watching us from facebook i'm a little please can you check if i'm on instagram live and let me know um for those of you who are watching who have been following us for a while this is for those people who are on social media if this ministry has been a blessing to you in any way if you have a testimony you have a contribution you have a question whatever it may be please you could reach out to us through our email which is the transforming woman 2020 at gmail.com or you could text us through 
either of the social media platform handles that have made provision for communication. You can text us through Facebook or through Instagram, and someone is definitely going to respond to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we're just going to go ahead with what we have for the day. But before we do that, my life on Instagram doesn't look like it. I don't think I am. Well, it looks like something has happened. Um, just let me know so I can, I shouldn't be distracted. No. Yeah. Okay. So there was an error with the broadcast. Uh, I'm sorry, sisters. Let me just see if I can go live again. Oh, I see why. My Wi-Fi was off. Okay. Okay, I think we are live now. I was kind of surprised. I'm sorry for the interruption. Okay, we are live now. I'm sorry. I think my Wi-Fi was off. Um, that's why. So today, we're going to be sharing on what are tied to overcoming distractions in the secret place. It's going to be our topic. Let's just pray before we go into the world. Father, I just want to thank you for this moment. I thank you for this morning. The opportunity you have granted to us to be in your presence is what we cannot trade for anything. Neither can we trade it for gold or for silver. We thank you so much for your word that is about to come forth this morning. We pray that you will speak to us through your word this morning. We ask that your word is going to bless our hearts. We ask that your word is going to change our lives. We ask that your word is going to meet our specific questions, inquiries, you know, specific needs that nobody knows about. We pray that your word will be able to answer all of these questions for us in the name of Jesus. I submit myself to you because i have never and i'll never be anything more than your servant i pray that as i bring forth your can you counsel to your people this morning as i'm privileged to bring forth your word i pray that you will use my tongue this morning for your purpose i pray that you put your word in my mouth just what you think your people are needing this morning that should be the thing that i'm going to speak take away every form of flesh inside of me and let the spirit man inside of me be activated i pray that you take away every form of pride every form of arrogance everything that that wants to exalt himself above the standard of God this morning. Please take it away from me so that your word can have a free flow to your people and that at the end of the day, their lives shall be transformed, their lives shall be blessed because they have an encounter with you. We come against the God of this world that blind the hearts of men. We declare, we declare that the hearts of men be open to receive from the master this morning. And I ask, O King of glory, that there shall be no resistance in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your will be done over this fellowship and over every listener this morning. And at the end of the day, please, Lord, take all the glory in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. And so we are talking about distractions. That's what I want us to look at this morning. Because I, as I said, of course, the topic is a very vast one. Every time we have an opportunity, we can't finish everything. But I felt, you know, in my spirit that this is what we should handle weeks ago. I felt that this particular um, theme this month of the sacred place, we are going to handle distractions because it's something it's a very very important topic and it's something that we all in one way or the other experience we all in one way or the other actually you know have an encounter with it so it's important that we look at the topic distraction there are so many people maybe you listening to me you might not be under this category of people but there are so many people who feel like oh my god you know i really wanted to do this i really wish that i would have been in this particular level this particular um, spiritual state even in my prayer life but for some reason i don't just know what is happening i find it difficult to get there i find it difficult to concentrate i find it difficult to attain that high that I've always desired to attain. You know, when this year started, every time a new year starts, everybody gets into that new year with such, um, with, you know, that kind of passion. Everybody gets into a new year with so much passion, so much enthusiasm, so much um, zeal. And most of those things, even though we have people who are not Christians, who won't, you know, they are, they are focused first, sometimes they prioritize their health, but you always see people who have that desire for God, always saying, oh, this year, you know what, by six months time, I might have finished my 
reading my Bible. And by the end of 2024, I have gone through my Bible three times. You know, I'm going to be praying every day. Maybe some of people even say I'm going to be praying three hours or so, 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 so. So people begin to set goals and all the rest, which normally at the beginning of the year, we always try to talk about those things. They are not bad, you know, to set goals. But before you know it, one month into that year, you discover that you are not even, you have not been able to keep up with some of the things you set at the beginning of the year. I think most often we just have this excitement, you know, seeing a new year, excited to, to be part of it. New Year, and so we make so many promises, we make so many goals that we cannot even fulfill. And by the time we are already in the last quarter of the year, the second half of the year, you see people getting to that point where they are almost discouraged, they are tired, they don't even know how to go about life again, they are fed up. And some people are just waiting for 2025 at this point, where we still have about five months left for the year to be finished. Some people are done with this year and they are waiting already for 2025. And that's why it is important for us to look at what could be some of the reasons why we easily get tired. Of course, there are a couple of reasons why we easily get tired, why we easily want to let things go, or why we couldn't you know, meet up with some of the things we said. Sometimes we can't even, if we, if we try to do um, a genuine analysis, we realize that we have not even done one third of the things we wanted to do. And the truth is most people, uh, they, they really want to see that they grow in their spiritual life. That's the you that's that that's the honest truth. You meet a lot of people who really want to grow. They just they don't just know how to go about it. They really want to know God better. They really want to have a relationship with Him. They really want to grow. But for some reason, they cannot just understand why they seem not to attain that particular height. We'll be looking at distraction. Of course, there are a couple of so many other things that could be responsible for that. Um, um, that um, stagnation in spiritual growth on your walk with God. But as we have been talking about the sacred place in this month, it is important to look at that one thing that actually keeps us away from the sacred place, that one thing that actually derails us. And then if we can have, you know, get a little bit of understanding, maybe after today, for someone, it's just going to be a January for you. And trust me, we still have five months and few days left for this year to be over. There's so much you can acquire in the next five months do not allow the enemy to cheat you that the year is already over because God can use this many parts of the year to do some amazing things in your life in your spiritual life and in your own physical life that you'll be so amazed at the wonders of God and so I'm trusting God that even after looking at the topic today it's just going to be there's just going to be this energy that is going to come into us you know there's just going to be this um, revival inside of us to start again to not to not to look down on ourselves not to cast down you know um we shouldn't be discouraged that oh maybe I've, I've lost it so let's talk about distraction this morning and let's see how far god is going to help us with the time we have for this word overcoming distractions in the sacred place is going to be our emphasis are we going to touch on small other things yes we're going to touch on other things around it but we want to try to now the you know the word distraction is a vast word it's actually very big but i wanted to try to now i didn't just want to talk about distractions i wanted us to see when it has to do with our spiritual life because distractions um it's it's made available in everything we pursue in life every every step we try to take there are always some stumbling blocks that are on the way to distract us from that particular thing that god has called us or he has asked us to do praise the lord and so let's start from the the basics what is distraction it is important for us to know what distraction is i know it's a very common word i know it's something that we all kind of have an idea as i always say but then what's the meaning of distraction Distraction. What does the dictionary tell us about distraction? I have two definitions. They are almost similar, but probably you may understand one more than the other. Distraction is anything that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. So you see the key word there. Full attention is what is needed. You have something you want to pursue, but anything that's going to prevent you from giving your attention to that which ought to be important right to so that which ought to be prioritized at a particular time anything that stops you that you know penetrates and infiltrates into 
you giving that full attention to what is required at that moment is called distraction. And what is another definition for distraction? It's similar. It's anything that takes your attention away from what is needed when performing an activity. Anything that takes your attention away from what is needed when performing an activity. You see that the word attention, we could see it in both, you know, both definitions. So it means that when we take away distraction from the from from the, the topic, it means that we are trying to talk about attention. So attention is needed. Attention is more like focusing on something, you know putting your all, uh, prioritizing that thing, dwelling on that thing and making sure that that thing is being productive. But then when distraction comes, what happens is that attention is affected. Attention, it's been split in so many ways, which actually makes us not to achieve what we want to achieve. And since we are talking about our prayer life, since we are talking about our relationship with God, which we must start by understanding that the scripture makes us understand that men always ought to pray and not to faint. Now, the reason why most of us faint is because of distractions. Now, distractions can come in so many ways, right? It can come in so many ways, but the reason why we faint, so the Bible is telling us that, you know, you ought to do this thing, means the scripture is telling us that prayer is non-negotiable prayer is not something the secret place is not something we say you could either do this or it doesn't have an alternative it can't there's no substitute for it so it's just giving us the importance of prayer and just like any other thing in your life sometimes as individuals we have things we have prioritized and we know that oh when it comes to this thing we cannot just afford to be distracted it's like when you send your daughter or you yourself going to school you know what you want to achieve and you know that at that particular time your studies is important to you and so what are you going to do you have to you know look around to check if there are anything if there is this if there's anything around you that might easily cause a distraction from you achieving the goal and that is why we see a lot of youth nowadays because they do not pay attention to those things that could easily distract them at the end of the day they do not um, finish their courses some people especially when it has to do when people go to the university Sometimes people do too well until they get to the place where they become independent, until they get to the place where they feel they could make decisions on themselves, until they get to the place where they feel there is no more accountability. Nobody's going to ask them, where are you coming from? Where are you going to? You discover that they allow these things to creep into their lives. And sometimes distractions will come in forms that don't look like it. I don't want to fast forward myself. It will come in forms that don't look like it. But I want to start with the foundation that attention is the key word when it's defining distraction because it is anything that will affect your attention and when we look at our work with god and in the things of the spirit we discover that attention is something that is being prioritized it's something that god really cares about god is really 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 focused about attention and he wants all of us children of god to be you know very um attentive to those things that we ought to pay attention to so we have to check out and assess to check those things that want to you know um deviate us from the attention we have towards god of course we could see it um basically from the the story of mary and martha we all know the story i didn't put it out there to be read because we know the story and we can see how amazing that story is how martha was a very good person Martha wanted to I mean every time I read that story I think about myself because I'm a I'm a service um I'm a service um personnel person if I put it that way I I like service so every time I look at that story I was like oh maybe if I was in that shoe I would have been mad because I would have been struggling what would you eat what would you do this what would you do that and so we know how Martha was um focusing on serving jesus which was a good thing but on the other side what mary had was the attention and we were surprised at the end of the day that jesus valued the attention more than you know the activity that Martha was doing so when distraction comes in of course Martha was not doing something that was wrong but jesus knew that Martha was doing the right thing at the wrong time because at that time, what Jesus needed was the attention. Jesus did not actually come to visit them for the food. I think probably, you know, 
maybe they would have been able to offer him something at the end or maybe jesus would have waited if he really needed to eat something he would have probably waited for matter to prepare something but at that time he came from for, for something more important than what Martha was trying to do so we can see littered all over scripture that jesus is interested in our attention jesus wants us to be attentive with our work with him with our relationship with him so we should be able to know that this is what jesus needs we can also see another story we can read that in uh, matthew chapter 6 verse 5 to 6 if you can put that up for me matthew chapter 6 verse 5 to 6 the bible says that let's read this and then We'll, we'll go the bible says that and when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites he said for the love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street that they may be seen by men as surely i say to you they have their reward now verse 6 he said but you i remember talking about this scripture sometime when we were looking in this particular thing but you he's referring to you and i in ttw you and i who are privileged to hear the word of god this morning god is referring to us he said but you he said when you pray go into your room and when you have done what you have shot away every distraction so this door is talking about even though he uses the word door is so that you can understand beyond the door itself shut your door pray to your father who is in the secret so he's telling us how we can pray no prayer can be effective when the door is open so pray to your father who is in the secret and your father who sees in the secret will do what will reward you openly so just like any other intimacy between a man and a woman of course we know that there is no proper intimacy that can be done in an open space every intimacy is always done behind the door and that is why if by any chance you go on social media or anywhere and you see any person you know, or two people trying to have an intimacy in the public everybody's gonna be like what is this because you are actually gonna be abnormal for you to do something like that in the public and the bible has made us to understand that we are the bride of christ you are the bride to your husband and we are the bride of christ are we understanding something because a man and a woman the groom and the bride will definitely have intimacy when the door is shut and why do couples have intimacy when the door is shut it's simply because they don't want interruption it's simply because they want to have that time for themselves it's simply because the cat should not crawl in for those who have pets the dog should not crawl in or that your little toddler that's when she wants to ask for milk no 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 that's not the time for milk it's the time for concentration you want to just give it to daddy and daddy just want to give it to mommy so you shut the door in fact even people who don't have kids in the house and just the both of them we the women will still say shut still close the door ah, but there's nobody in the house just shut the door you might never know you might never know so why do we insist on the door being shut it's simply because it's a time that is being valued it's a time that is being prioritized it's a time where we do not want interruption you don't want to say oh ah, oh sorry mommy i just say oh i'm sorry i'm sorry it's a mistake i didn't i didn't i didn't plan to get in here no you don't want anybody to be explaining to you that it's a mistake because they're just going to interrupt your sweet time and so we being the bride of christ if we understand it from that perspective knowing that we are the bride of christ we also know that that is why the lord is telling us that if you are going to have intimacy with me he's using these common things that we all know and most often i've come to realize that if we try to sometimes we don't need to go too far to understand god just look around you and look at the basic things especially if you're that kind of person like me that the holy spirit talks to me so much with actions and things around me you will understand god better and your relationship with god will just keep um, um skyrocketing it will just keep increasing because the way you value things that's why it is important that in everything you get understanding when the word of god comes if when you have an understanding of the word every time the word is coming like this and you have an understanding that's where it transforms 
Transformation takes place. When we're leaning this morning, I was telling um, the people who were there, I was reading to them Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. And you see that the scripture made it categorically clear that for any life to bear fruit, whether it is 30%, 60%, or 90%, two things should be involved. They must be able to have heard the word. And number two, the ability to understand the word is what brings for transformation in your life. So no man will actually grow without being, you know, without the ability to understand. So every time you come into the presence of God and every time you have an opportunity to hear the word, seek to understand the word in a simple way as you could because if you make it more practical it's going to be more beneficial to you so we all understand the privacy we should have with our spouses but we do we have not been able to translate that and see how god is thinking if the bible says you are the bride you are the bride of christ so it's the same thing it may not be the same kind of intimacy, but then if you have an understanding of how this one works, you have a better understanding of what Jesus is expecting from us and what the master is expecting from us. And so that is why I say, if you want to have an intimacy with me, you, I mean, if you want to meet with all other people, he said, it's fine. He was just defining how you can meet him in the secret. He was defining how he likes to be met. And that is why he gave a comparison between two set of people. He talked about the hypocrites and he now said before you who you and i who have decided or we have made our mind that we are not part of the hypocrites we have excluded ourselves and we have differentiated ourselves say for you this is what i expect you to do because you are my bride i would like the door to be shut and of course if you understand that the door is anything you know if the door of your house but he's not just talking about the door of your house alone it could be the door of your your sacred place in the house of course it could be your prayer door but anything that will hinder your attention towards him just imagine that you having an intimacy why you your husband is trying to have something with you or the wife is trying to have something with the husband and the husband is manipulating the phone or the husband is on the phone call or the husband is texting we all know that we're not going to feel fine and that could be for some for some marriages that's a biggie some people it can even lead to divorce that's how how serious it could be but none of us actually think that oh as the bride how have i been treating the bridegroom have i been treating my father what conscious effort are you making oh if i can feel this about my spouse when my husband does this to me and I feel this, oh, how have I been treating the bridegroom? The most important one of all. Because he, I keep, you know, I usually, usually is the one that determines whether you wake up the next morning. That's a powerful relationship. Everything is in his hands. He determines what happens to you the next second. That's not the kind of relationship that we can try to trade for anything. That's not the kind of relationship we can we can try to lose at any point. We have to fight to preserve such relationship. We have to fight to keep such relationship. Because there's no other relationship better and greater than that relationship. And so we are the bride of Christ. The question is, how have we treated the bridegroom? And every time he says, I've come, I'm at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. How have we treated him? I know we go to church. I know we do things, but how are we treating the bridegroom in our lives? When every time he desires to have some time with us or he desires to be with us, how do we treat him? It's what we're going to be looking at this morning. The Bible says just establishing the fact that this is our father we are talking about. He loves our attention. He's more interested. Sometimes he's even, he's even more interested you know, in spending time with us than the way we are interested in spending time with him. In Matthew chapter 26, I'll read it, but I'll definitely use this um, example to give us some of the ways we can avoid distraction, some of the things we can take into consideration. But I'll just really quickly, you know, I'll just run through it and then um, subsequently I'll say one or two things from that scripture. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and said to them, Sit here while how come you gave me NIV? That's strange. Every time I give scriptures, you know it's always New King James Version. That's strange though. Anyway, you pull it up. Uh, Matthew chapter 26 from verse 36. I'll just open my, my Bible. It's okay, sis. <laughs> 
So Matthew 26, why she's pulling up. I'm reading from verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. 38. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Are you seeing that exclamation? You know, sometimes if we read the Bible, if we take what? It's not just a continuation. It's an exclamation sign. He was surprised. He was disappointed because he expected what their attention. And when he came, he did not see the attention. So he wasn't happy. He was like, what? I can't believe you guys are sleeping. So let's continue. He said, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? He was disappointed. Watch and pray. Least you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak so the flesh can be what a distraction 42 again a second time he went away and prayed saying oh my father if this cup cannot pass away from me unless i drink it your will be done and he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy so he left them and went away and prayed the third time saying the same words then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed. Betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. May the Lord bless that word for us this morning in Jesus' name. I will come back to this particular word because it's so loaded when it has to do with distraction, how to handle distraction, how Jesus handled it. We'll come back to bear why I had to read the scripture at the very beginning is because I was still um, laying a foundation of the fact that this God we are serving likes our attention. This bridegroom of us loves our attention. And that is why even Jesus was not happy. He actually took them three of them for a purpose he didn't take them to go and sleep sleep is needed but at that time that was not what they were supposed to be doing they had an assignment they they had something they needed to do they need to spend time with the father it was a time of fellowship it was not a time of sleeping so he was actually irritated by the fact that they were not praying by the fact that they could not intercede so that makes us understand that god sometimes we might hurt his feeling when we are actually not doing what we are supposed to do. The second thing you see from that scripture is that the fact that you are in his presence does not necessarily mean that you are not distracted. So you can be in his presence and still be very much distracted. Remember, they had come to the place of prayer. They were in the place where they were supposed to pray, but they were not just doing what they ought to have done. So, so many times we can be in church, we can, you know, do the things we are doing, I can be doing TTW and, you know, this particular message, myself, I need it so bad because I can be distracted too sometimes. So don't think that because I have the privilege of saying I'm coming in as some holy somebody here who does not have not experienced distraction or sometimes is not distracted. No, and I don't think there's anybody that the enemy will not throw distraction at. The question we want to handle is how do you want to solve it? How do you handle it? Because distraction is almost inevitable for every individual, regardless of how spiritual you are. It's almost inevitable. It's just how do I handle my distractions? So you can be full-time in such a ministry and yet be full-time distracted. I can be a leader full-time preaching the word of God to women every week and be full-time distracted. And which I remember giving you guys an example that this year something happened and I just discovered that there was something, I wasn't doing things the way I was supposed to do. And I was so, I was feeling so bad. 
and I, after a while I understood that the way I was feeling was not from God. It was not actually, even though sometimes you have the Holy Spirit to convict you, but that kind of feeling where you get so disappointed at yourself, you get so broken, it's not from God. Because one thing I've understood is that when you miss it, what God wants you to do is to run back to him. But every time you find that guilt in such a way, you can't even pray again. Then it makes you to say, like, ah, look at you. Maybe after you have heard the word of God today, it's okay. Let me try to, you know, eliminate this distraction. The enemy will come and say, ah, from January to July, you think that you just walk and meet your father and your father will listen to you. So he will bring condemnation. Every time we feel condemnation, even when we miss it, it's not from God. Because every time, even as a parent, when your child misses it, you like it when your child comes and says, Mommy, I'm sorry. Mommy, I know that this thing hurts you. I know that I didn't do it right, but Mommy, please forgive me. I'm going to do better. You feel, you feel as a mom, you feel good. Even though you are not happy with the action of that child, but you feel satisfied to know that the child could run back to you. You understand that this child would have gone into the world. This child would have tried to, you know, listen to other people or tell other people about it. But just the fact that this child can still trust you and come back to you. This is the way you feel. And sometimes if we have this understanding, we should know how our dear father feels towards us. That even though we miss it sometimes, maybe we say, ah, you were saying that this year I would have been doing this my prayer life. But in fact, this year is the worst. You, you have had the worst prayer life since we were born. And so the enemy has taken advantage of that. Now, condemnation, what he has done, he has just stopped you. There is no, you don't have any again. Because he keeps condemning you. Even though sometimes you are trying your 30, 30 minutes. Now the enemy condemns you. You reduce to five minutes. He just condemns you. Now you just stop because you don't feel qualified again. I'm here to remind you that no, that is not God's intention. He doesn't want you to get to the place where you are condemned. No, it doesn't matter how bad. Whether you have not prayed for one, three weeks, or, or you have not prayed for a month, or, the message is not coming to condemn you. It's just to help you because sometimes you don't even know how to handle it. And sometimes because distraction does not come in the form of distraction, you don't even know that is distraction, which will be seen subsequently with these few minutes we have. Right? Hallelujah. Um. I want us to note, I've said it before, when I started, I said that um, distractions are common. Distractions are inevitable. Distractions happen to everybody. However, your distractions may not be my distraction. For example, like me, you can't use TV to distract me, for example. Anybody who knows me knows I'm not a TV person. So the enemy already knows that, so he can't even use TV to distract me. There's no, it doesn't matter how, how nice the movie is. I've passed the stage of TV. But there are some people, Jesus, hey, <laughs> movies, if you want to finish them, just, just put movies on their path. You get it? So what I'm trying to say is how, because maybe I might not give you the point. I'll just be speaking as the Holy Spirit is putting in my mind. Maybe it may not come in point form, but as I'm preaching, as I'm teaching, you'll be able to, I'll be bringing out some ways you can handle distractions. So, as I said, that distractions are inevitable. All of us experience distractions. Distractions come in different forms, in different ways. But I just want to point out two major ways that distraction will come. It will mostly comes from your internal thoughts and the things around you. That's the first way. The first way that distractions will come. Or distractions can come from the enemy the enemy and which i could have just said is still is still the same thing because what will happen is when we say distraction comes through satan you look as though satan is not going to come as a being to you it's not going to come with that structure you wanted to see so satan is definitely going to use all these means going to use your thoughts your imagination is going to use the things around you to distract you and because distraction may come in well good meaning packages most of us can be so carried away with these things without even knowing distractions can come in the form of a blessing i experienced that this year distraction can come in the form of a blessing so god can bless you with something and that thing becomes a major reason why you disconnect from your source and because it's a blessing you do not even pay you don't you don't even realize that you have lost it or you are losing it you are losing your place 
you are losing your intimacy. So there are very forms of many forms of um, um, distraction, which I might not be able to mention. Or of course, we know in this 21st century, one of the ways the enemy will use is social media. We know that very well. All of us are not, I mean, unless you are not on social media, anybody who is not there, the Lord really bless you. You're on a good footing. We know that the Lord will use social media, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it may be. He uses that now a lot to distract us. It may be through our phone calls. It may be through text messages. It may be through your thoughts. You know, those things that are running through your mind. But one thing I want you to know so that you don't condemn yourself is that our thoughts and our mind, the way our brain has been wired, it cannot be static. It means you can't put your brain, your brain has been your thoughts, you know, it has been wired in such a way that it moves. Your brain has not been wired to stay on the same thoughts for a long time. So it keeps wandering and going to different areas. So it becomes you and I, our responsibility to redirect your thoughts to the place and the angle you want it to focus on. So every thought that is not redirected sometimes becomes very dangerous because you just allow your thoughts to wander around and take you to the places where it wants to take you to. So we must understand that sometimes you will not beat yourself over it. It's nature for your thoughts to go around how many of us know that or have experienced it, which I think all of us have experienced it. Sometimes, some days even, eh, I'll pray and when I finish, because me, probably because I needed to go do something, let's say I just had 30 minutes or one hour. But when I finish, I know that this one hour, I just, I just wasted my time. Because by the time I just started praying, that's when I'm thinking, eh, maybe I needed to send Kelly a message. That's when the, that's when the information is coming to my mind. Oh, you need to send Kelly a message for the team of this, this, this. And you know, it can look as though it's a, it's a, it's a spiritual thing because it's a concerning TCW. For where? It's distraction. Eh, I need to text this social person. Um, after this prayer, I'll do this. What am I cooking? Ah, there's no food in the house. I don't know. We all have experienced this opening that everything was just waiting when you get into that place of prayer and all these thoughts are coming. All these things are coming. So they may look so good, so genuine, but these are actually things that the enemy is putting in place. And when I say the second thing is, is Satan, it's because the Bible says that the, the thief comes not to the thief comes, but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So anything that the, the enemy is going to implement to make sure that he fulfills his ultimate assignment is what he's going to do. He can use any form. But the end of it, so it's not going to come out. You should say the enemy, is, Satan is not going to come with a gun. Satan is not going to come like a robber to break your house and steal goods from you. Or to actually just destroy you literally. But he's going to implement these things that will actually lead to your destruction. Every time your relationship with God, there is that uh, um, dysfunctionality. There is that separation. You can't live without God. That's, the, that's, that's just the truth. I don't know about you. Me, I've gotten to a point where I don't know. I don't know how I can do without him. You can't do without him. And so anything that will separate you from his law, separate you from him, that thing is gradually taking away your life. You may still be living, but you are gone in the inside. Anything that kills you, it's just like your blood cells. Why you need them? Because they protect you from diseases. And so if anything happens to your white blood cells, we know what I, I mean. I'm not a scientist. But at least we know those basic things. So our work with God, that is what it's a shield around us. So the enemy knows that, no, 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 no. I can't stop you from having the blessing. I can't stop God from doing certain things. But I can stop you from having a relationship with him. And one thing I want us to understand is, okay, let me not fast forward. I'll go to that point. So the first thing I want you to take note is that you have to identify what kind of distraction you are experiencing my distraction as i said earlier is not the same with yours so find out what is actually distracting me from my intimacy what is that thing because you will be able to know what is that thing that is taking my time more what is that thing that i know that i can reduce i can deliberately reduce this time i can deliberately eliminate this one and create time for the father so identify the kind of distraction you are experiencing. It's very important. It's the first way to handle your distraction. What distracts you may not distract me. I'm somebody, if anybody knows me, 
For example, I usually give this example. I don't know how to read in noise. Mine is so bad in such a way, if you do something as little as this, I lost it. So every time I want to study, if, I, if I'm in school, if I'm going to school, I don't follow. There are some people who, there's a sister in TCW, I met her reading one day and she had this, she was listening to music. So I was kind of, ah, do you, she said, yeah, she doesn't read if there's no music. I said, Jesus. <laughs> She cannot read when there's no music. She only understands when there's a music. I say, wow, some people have graces. I don't like someone to even tell me good morning if I'm doing something that, if I'm reading. That's how bad my own is. So if you do not identify the kind of distraction you are experiencing, nobody can help you. So you have to be genuine to yourself. You have to do a self-evaluation. What is that thing? Most of us women, it's our homes. It's our marriages, it's our spouse, our children. Some people, it's not even social media. It's their kids. So since they have kids now, no more relationship with God. But then the question we have to ask ourselves is at the end, is that what you'll be able to explain to your father? Is that what you'll be able to tell him that, Lord, it is because of these kids you gave me. Remember that, you know, um, he and Adam did the same thing. But that was not an excuse. He said, it is the woman you gave me. So the enemy used that. He was distracted. Identity issues. We see David. David, they say when it was time for go to, when it was time for him to go to war, he did not go to war. He was just spying on his window and he saw something that distracted him. Samson, the same thing, lying on the laps of a woman was his own distraction. So for Eve, what Eve experienced was not what Samson experienced. And what Samson experienced was not what, um, 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 was not what David experienced. Some people, you see the life of, um, what's this woman in the scripture? Um, Abigail. Her husband at that particular time was a distractor to her. If she did not identify it, the man's mean attitude and his words at that moment was what would have distracted her. And if she did not pay attention that this was a distraction, what would have happened? Her family would have been destroyed. So as women, we have to first of all start by identifying what is that thing that is actually distracting me from that which is important. I have come to understand that prayer does not, um, what's this word? Prayer does not um, um, take away your time. Prayer saves your time. Truly, the things we hear we about sometimes, I mean, I'm saying it like that, I'm guilty. But it's for us to be able to learn and then try to make our lives better. Sometimes I'll just wake up because I have all of this. Maybe I got up late. I just step out. But don't know that five minutes of prayer can save you from a disaster that was kept outside. So prayer, actually, even though we say we don't have the time, we don't have the time. Prayer does not take away our time. Prayer eventually saves our time. Sometimes you are in a hurry. Have you not discovered that it doesn't matter how much you are in a hurry if the cops pull you you don't have a choice you have to wait and i like the way the american cops will do when they pull you first of all sit in their car for a while it can be very irritating before they eventually meet you and then when they take your documents they will i don't know what they do with it they will sit down there and probably you will you will have an appointment so prayer does not actually waste our time prayer actually saves time Five minutes of that time, you wake up to say, thank you, I commit this day into your hands, can go a long way because you are not sure of what is ahead of you. So you can only submit the unknown to the one who knows the unknown. But because we are carried away with all of these blessings that God has given unto us, because we have the ability to drive, because we have the car, because we have the job, it comes in a package of a blessing, but that is what the enemy is using full time to separate us from that place of intimacy. So identifying what is your own weakness is halfway, you know, it's halfway soft. If you can identify what keeps you away from his presence, you should be able to solve that issue. So identify what your distraction the bible says in second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy we should not be ignorant we should know that he can use any form he said least satan take advantage of us which we, we are not ignorant of his design of his of his devices so we need to we need to take note of that how can i you know handle distractions 
we see in that scripture how Jesus was teaching us and he said that if you will pray, he said you should shut the door. Of course, we could see throughout the life of Jesus. Now, the reason why Jesus was waking up at night time, the Bible says when everybody's asleep. And early in the morning, when the disciples are still asleep, it's just to illuminate distractions. Find out what time is convenient for you. Yeah, do they say praying at night? Praying at night is very good. Because we all know that the enemy, you know, works actively at night. But that does not mean the enemy is sleeping at daytime. I hope you guys know that. So don't beat yourself too much, especially if you are starting. Because sometimes I think, I used to be a preacher of that, but I think as we keep growing, we must be able to identify what works for you and what can be consistent. What works for A may not work for B. And most times as pastors, as leaders, that's not a validation, but I think from observation, from what I observe is most pastors just do ministry full time. Are they very busy? Yes. Some of them are not too busy and some of them are very busy, yet they still create time for God. As Jesus was very busy, he still created time. But sometimes, let's say you and I, some people have two jobs, some people have three jobs, some people have a job, some people have spouses. The way a man will handle his own time in prayers, maybe because the woman is multi involved in multi taxing the kids, the food. So we agree that these things are real. We need to also, you know, participate in this even though we're saying that some of them can be distract distractions but that does not mean that we don't have a role to play so someone who is just doing ministry as full-time has no two jobs more often than to pray and to preach so there's a tendency that they may have more time allocated so you identify yourself sometimes some of you you walk and you come in maybe 11 30 the truth is i used to tell my husband sometimes i say sometimes nature will kick in if you have been accumulating it, you have not had enough sleep, you slept three hours yesterday, you slept two hours, the third day you will crash. You just discover, remember at 7 a.m. that you were, you were speaking in tongues around 11.50. That's the last thing you remembered after speaking in tongues for one day. So it's, it's not the fact that you shouldn't be true to yourself. So even when God is saying that we should shut our door, identify, sometimes I don't know, was this Sister Gladys or somebody has said in TTW how, they will go ahead of a testimony of a woman who, because of her kids, having five kids, she will go to the closet. She will go to the bathroom as if she wants to have number two. There she can spend 15 minutes. So it's all about you identifying. Some other people, it's 5 a.m. That is their consistent time or that's the convenient time for them. So rather than just saying that because you must do it as a culture, that's why we must be careful of setting cultures that have been put in place. Rather than saying you must do it as culture because you have to be up at 12 midnight and you came back from work at 11 30, you're tired. The next thing you remember was that you were up at 12, but you can't remember praying at all. And so you fell asleep in the place of prayer, which nothing is wrong with that, but you only got up at 7 a.m. So by the time you get up, your neck will be hurting. You didn't pray at the end of the day and you didn't sleep in bed. So if you see that maybe you describe you're tired and every time you try to pray at 12 because you walk and you came out from work, you can look for a coffee. Maybe you can sleep. Maybe 3 o'clock, maybe 4 a.m. But just allocate, check your own schedule. Our own work schedules are not the same. So finding a comfortable time and a place that works convenient for you, the most important thing is just to keep your fire burning to make sure that your relationship is intact. So let nobody threaten you because you didn't wake up at 12 o'clock. You are a sinner. Or your prayer has not been answered. The Bible used to say Jesus woke up early in the morning. That was the convenient time. But if you read the scripture, you see the crowd did not allow him. So he had to look for time. Because that crowd, as good as he was as a minister, could also become a distraction if he would have disconnected from the source. So he had to deliberately implement strategies that would help him to build his connection with God. So each and every one of us have our own responsibility to build it based on our schedule. When you listen to your man of God or listen to your woman of God, that does not mean you must copy exactly the way their own, you know, time with God is. God is going to be there waiting for you. Trust me. God is there in the afternoon. God is there at night. So find out a time that is convenient for you. The story I gave to us, because of time, I might not be able to finish it, but that's fine. Even if you just had two or three things, 
that has been able to help you today, it's okay. Please, we are live. Do not forget to share the video and be a blessing to somebody. When we look at that story when Jesus was in the garden, the Bible makes us understand. The Bible says he began, the Bible says, when after he called Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he said he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Mothers, women, sometimes burdens of life can make us to be deeply distressed. These are things that I will. The Bible says he was sorrowful and deeply distressed. Now, one of the things you must also understand, I know I'm going up and down, but one of the things you must also understand is that one of the reasons we have distraction is because of some static belief. And I, I could testify that this is true. You know, most of it has happened to me so many times. When you treat prayer more as a routine than a desire, you discover that you have a lot of distractions. I'll say that again. When you treat prayer more as a routine than a desire, sometimes distractions almost become inevitable and part of your prayer life. Why do I say so? And I, I could testify that that is true in my life. You know, at one point in our lives with God, when we start going, we want to work with God, one of the things you discover is that you just, you don't want to feel guilty. As I said, that sometimes the enemy will use it as guilt. Oh, you didn't pray yesterday. You didn't pray yesterday. So because you don't want to feel guilty, what you want to do is you want to fulfill all righteousness. So you just want to have this peace of mind in your heart. Just convince yourself that anyway, I prayed. Even though you know that your prayer was not effective. Even though you know that it didn't go anywhere, probably it didn't even pass through the roof of your house. Even though you know that this one, when you went there, you're just thinking about what that man said to you yesterday. But just because you, you were kneeling down for religious sake, because you were actually kneeling down, you just want to feel, and it has happened to me so many times. I'll give you an example that times I just knew that this one today, it was just a wasted one hour. I don't know if, I don't know how I put my phone on, phone on air and, airplane mood and i still receive calls i really don't know how that happens praise the lord you know so what am i saying sorry that thing just threw me off i don't know where what i was saying okay i was talking about um that if you treat prayer more as a routine so what god wants from us is hunger when you treat prayer and that's what i'm trying hard to develop because i've i've been more on routine side where you just be like okay i need to pray every day you pray more for routine's sake without any impact. And that is why such prayers don't bring us much transformation. But when you pray from the place of desire, when you pray from the place of, 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 of hunger, you discover that the prayer has weight. But when you just pray because, okay, it's a routine, I don't want to feel bad, you cannot afford that to have distractions. And then leading me to the next thing, as I said, looking at the life of Jesus, the Bible says he was deeply sorrowful. There are things around us that may cause us to be sorrowful. And there are times when you go into the place of prayer, what will happen is you are trying to focus. But there's just this particular thought that keeps coming to your mind. You, you try to take it away. You say, blood of Jesus, I cancel this thought. I do this. But the more you try to cancel, the more the thought is coming so strong. I want you to know that that may be an opportunity for a prayer point. The Bible says that what, when Jesus got to the garden, what drove him was that deep sorrow in his heart. It wasn't like a regular day. Now, we know that he had a lifestyle of praying, but this particular one, and that's why the scripture says he came, he went back and forth three times. It wasn't an ordinary kind of prayer. Sometimes if you want to have complete focus, sometimes it must come from a place of body. It must come from a place of hunger. The Bible says he was deeply sorrowful. There was an issue at hand. And sometimes, even when you go into the place of prayer, it may not be Satan, Satan all the time. Maybe this particular thought is just coming. Why don't you think that, no, God wants you to address that thought? So now you allow that thing that was looking like a distraction become a prayer point. What have you done? You have eliminated the distraction. I don't know if I'm making sense. Because this thing that Jesus was going through would have been a distraction. There was something ahead of him. There was an assignment he was supposed to pursue. But what happened was that it came as a result. Now, and I think maybe the enemy was in charge of this. His heart was heavy. As a human being, sometimes it happened. He, was, he, he had a burden. And it wasn't a nice one. It was something that if he did not address, it would have become something that would have affected his, his, his ultimate assignment. So what did he do? He decided to take this thing that would have been a distraction 
in a place in the place of prayer. He decided to take it. It's an indication that maybe the Lord wants to talk to you about it. And guess what? I don't have the time. I know I gave you the scripture. Now, because Jesus knew that if I don't handle this thing, this thing can be a distraction. So he decided to take it as a prayer point. He went and said, Father, you know what? I have an issue. Something is wrong with me. I don't understand it. I don't know if I'm prepared. I know that this is what I've been called to do, but I don't know if I'm, I'm prepared again for, for this assignment. I don't know if any of you have ever gotten to that point of your life. I don't know if I'm prepared for it. The enemy thought he was bringing that one to, 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 to derail him. But Jesus understood that this, if I don't handle it, it's a distraction. So let me take advantage of the distraction and use it for my advantage. You can turn your distractions to your advantage. Even if it's your phone or social media, you can ask God, kill the appetite. I used to tell you how I used to be a movie person. But up to today, I can't understand because I cannot believe that it is by my strength that I, I don't have appetite for movies. I don't have it. So it is possible. I don't have appetite for it. I just do it sometimes once in a while for fun, but I you can you can you can use it to distract me. It's not me. But before I'll tell you titles of of movies of how they call this thing series. I wake up early in the morning to catch those early movies that they say the new new ones, the nice nice ones, very early. 5 a.m. I'm up, 4 30. I watch it to like 7 30. Then when I have this series, I follow the series everywhere I go until my laptop dies. I have to put it on charge. So I can I can focus on that. So what am I saying? You can address that and you use that thing. You take it and say, this is a prayer point. Find out your weakness and take it before the Father. If you have struggled and it's not working, say, God, my issue is social media. God, my issue, maybe it's anger. Maybe you discover your own. Is that any time you want to pray, that's when your husband will say something you don't like. That's, that's the end of it. You don't know that that's something that you can take. You say, ah, this may be a trick. Because the way the enemy will make it, it will look as though you have the right to be angry at that point. You come as if you, you know you have the right. Even Jesus, he had the right. Who would want to die? That kind of death. He had the right to be sorrowful. But you don't know that neglecting that, you are neglecting your source. So use it. So the Bible makes us understand, even though he was sorrowful and deeply distressed, he did not run away. He went into the presence. And if you read Luke chapter 22, please don't put the scripture up. There's no time. The Bible makes us understand, uh, um, Matthew did not give us this version, but the Bible, if you read Luke chapter 22, the same version of where Jesus was in the Bible, um, in, the, in the garden, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came and strengthened him. What became a distraction? The Lord had to help him eliminate it. The spirit of the Lord, and it was because it was based on, the, on that strength that he could go to the cross. But if he was whining in the distraction, he wouldn't have been able to go to the cross. So carry the distraction if it's too heavy and you cannot get it away. Take it as a prayer point. And what will happen? The Lord will help you supernaturally to be able to overcome that distraction. Sometimes I'll just give one more point and that'll be it because there's no time. You can't look about it. But another thing that may work for you, it's praying with focus. You know, sometimes, even though they say you must not plan, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit can, can lead you to the areas, but that does not mean that you don't go. It's right if you are struggling. You want to try praying with, with focus. Sometimes, if it's hard for you, one of the things you may do, if you are struggling, you are distracted, sometimes you don't even, you end up, you are just like, ah, you are forgotten what you are praying for. Now you start thinking about that guy, thinking so many things may just be coming to your mind, thinking about that person that made the statement to you and all the rest. But if you had a focus why you went to that place, especially if it's a body focus, I, I remember, you know, that sometimes when your heart is heavy, nothing can distract you. That time when you go into the place, nothing can distract you. It's like having a focus. Another thing you can try in practice too is the scripture because the scripture will help you to be defined. When you have a scripture and prayer points are coming from that scripture, if you are starting, it will help you to be defined. You have this scripture and this prayer point, so you have that thing in order. Don't just do it as a religion. Let your heart be open. But those are things, some of the things that can help you to be able to maintain that intimacy without distractions. Because we discover that when we have distractions, you know, God is going to affect our relationship with God. It's going to affect us the way we pray. Because of time. 
I just hope that some of these things we have heard. I might not, I have not been able to mention your specific needs or your specific distraction, but just know that distractions can come in the place of blessing. And please, we need to be deliberate. And that is why if you read that scripture in John, the Bible makes us understand, uh, um, the Bible makes us understand that, is it in John or Matthew? In Matthew, sorry. The Bible makes us understand, he said, you should shut the door. It means it is not God who is going to eliminate distractions from your life. You are the one who is supposed to take up the responsibility to build structures in place that will help you maintain a healthy relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I will give one prayer point and I will give over the opportunity to to continue. I want us to pray. As I said, none of us, and if you think at any time you don't have it, please pray for me because me, I need it. I need it. Sometimes you die, sometimes sleep. Sometimes your alarm will ring and you just turn the thing off. One of the things I used to do before, and I mean, I still do it anyway, but they, I discovered that if I put my phone by me, it doesn't work out well because I would definitely just be lazy and turn it. But when I put it away, when I have to wake up from the bed to go pick it up, most often than not, I will start praying. So it's just all about identifying. But sometimes you never know. At every given stage in your life, the enemy will want to bring something. So you might be able to have mastered this one. And the enemy is going to use something else. It's just all about being sensitive. And so, so we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to help us. We're going to ask for forgiveness for the so many times we have given so much excuses. The Bible says there's a measure of grace given unto all men. So even though we know grace is available, everything is, ah, Lord, I know, I know I've not been faithful. I know I don't have time with you, but don't worry. Don't worry, I'm coming. Here. Don't worry, I'm coming. Don't worry, I know your message is available. He says there's a measure of grace given unto all men. Grace is not there for us to abuse it. The reason why we should consciously look at things and say, okay, how do I, how do I make it up? Distraction, even when the word of God is going on. One of the things I consciously do now, once in a while, if need be, unless there's something very serious, even though maybe at one point I'll be keeping my phone in the car. It's, it's a conscious decision. They don't say it in my church. I just consciously, I've been telling, I say, Father, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do these things to make my work with God better. I say, when I come into your presence, because when you go to um, the presidency, you will not do that. You go to the embassy, you keep your phone outside. You don't even enter with it. So we discover that there are certain things that it is only with our work with God we take it for, for granted. We say it, but we don't prioritize it. You can start by, by most you consciously take your, put your phone on silence. And you must not, just for two hours, what will happen to us? What's this deficiency? We cannot keep our phone for two hours and focus on the word of God. Just focus on the service. There may be something, there will be something you will hear from that service. There will be something you will hear from that fellowship. But you see somebody is in church, the person is on Facebook, the person is on Instagram. Eh? Two hours in the presence of God will not kill us. So what am I saying? We All of us, like sometimes, you know, I consciously do these things. I'll put my phone on silence. I consciously do it. Sometimes I'll just consciously say, you know, even when you're praying, you must not take your phone. You don't even need to. My phone can be with me when I'm praying. The one of the things, because sometimes I discover, even if it's on silent, if the screen is face up, you know, because of the light, the reflection, so your phone can be ringing and you see the flash. You can become distracted. So I turn my screen down. So if it's ringing, I will not know it's ringing. I do that if I want to sleep. Why would I not do that if I want to pray? The only challenge I face is I usually always, because I like to pray with music. That's one thing about me. I pray more when there's a sound behind. So because of that, I always need either my phone or my laptop. So if I'm praying at work, for example, because I don't have the laptop I work, I have to use my phone. So that makes it, I need to be more intentional with that and avoid messages coming in. But another thing is that because I have WhatsApp on my computer, so there's a tendency that when the music is going on on YouTube, I will get notification. But I will never, I try as much, I will not go to WhatsApp to open it up unless I finish praying. But I put my phone on silent. But my tablet does not, this tablet does not have um, WhatsApp connected to it. So it means that it is better for me and safer for me to use the tablet than even the laptop and the phone if I'm at home to eliminate all kinds of distractions. So identify. But at this point, what are we doing? We want to pray and we're asking God for that grace. But it's not just all about the grace. It starts with you making up your mind. Looking at small, small things you can work on. Even if your pastor does not know how to pray, just sit there. There will be something you will hear. I'm telling you, if you focus. 
and we discover that we have been in church two, two years, three years. Maybe at the end of the year, they ask you, what have you learned in this church? You have been going. Maybe you can't attest of one thing you have heard. And God has been speaking every Sunday. It's simply because even in church, you are distracted. And it is not the enemy. I mean, the enemy uses those things, but it is you allowing the enemy to be able to take advantage. Why not make up your mind and say, you know what? I'll keep my phone away. Those messages are not running away. Anybody who knows me, my husband, anybody, Kelly, they know me. If I'm sleeping, my phone is on silent. And people keep asking me, what if there's an emergency? I say, God will take care of the emergency. It's not, it's not me. There's nothing I can do. Even back home, if they call me, I can do. I'm telling you. If they call me, oh, some this is happening, nothing will. There's nothing I can do. God knows that I'm stressing at that time. I don't sleep with my phone. If it's, I'm at home, my phone is on silent. Because if I want to have three hours or four hours, I don't want any interruption. What if your husband is an emergency? I say, God, take care of it. God allowed the emergency to happen. God forbid, when I was sleeping, he knew it was my sleeping time. And I said, I asked people the question. I said, will you live all your life? How many emergencies by the mercy of God do I have in a year? So I'll live my life in uncertainty, waiting for emergency. So living my life to be distracted by others because of one emergency that can happen in one time in 10 years. Does that make sense? Sometimes we think about these things. Yes, of, 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 of a truth, emergency can happen. Some people tell me it doesn't matter if they're sleeping. If you call their phone, they can pick up the call and they continue sleeping. So maybe it works for them. But I made up my mind years ago that this country is so the work in this country is not easy. So if I have the time to sleep, it doesn't matter what is happening. When I wake up, I'll return to that message. And trust me, the God I'm serving will take care of me. And to God be the glory for my years in this country. By his mercy, I've never had any emergency that made me to regret that. Oh, if my phone was on, God has taken care of it. So we can do the same thing. Let him see your heart. That's why this ministry is existing. We go into those little things that we don't pay attention to. If I'm going to the presence of God, expect something from him. Father, please, I know I honor my president. I honor some of us. We honor, we, there are people we honor, but we don't honor God. It may not be a prayer time, but it's a time you are meeting with the Father. When the word of God is going like this, a time he's talking to you. He can use the word to minister to you. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to be the person. I'll just keep my phone away. Just for one hour, when the word of God is going on, be attentive. Just, just listen to the word and let God minister to you. It may not be everything, but that one word you will use this. I remember a few weeks ago in church, something the man of God said that shocked me. And that was the most important thing I got from that word that they say every time you are sinning, they say you are nailing Jesus back to the cross. That word touched my heart. I said, God, eh? So every time I, I, I make a mistake, I am nailing you on the cross. That word got to me. But if I was distracted, I wouldn't have heard that word. So please, it's not important to do things. It is important to start doing the right. It's important to start checking on yourself. Small, small things, work on them. Small, small things, work on them. Start thinking how you can, how you can prioritize God. Start from, start small. Just prioritize him. If I can't do this to the governor, if I can't do this, will I do this to my father? Will I do this to him? Why not go before the father and say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. Me, myself, my own, I need double mercy. I'm sorry, have mercy. Have mercy. I've heard your word. Have mercy. Have mercy. How dare I prioritize the children you have given unto me more than you? You are just a custodian. Have you forgotten? You are not the owner. Hey, how dare I? This man you have given unto me, he can, God forbid, you can become a widow at any time. The person can become a widower. In other words, May I not make as if I'm more intelligent than God? And so go before the Father and say, Mercy, oh, mercy. Sometimes maybe the body so much ask God, please, this is my desire, help me. Maybe grant me the wisdom of how to allocate my work schedule. Grant me the wisdom of how to deal with this spouse of mine who will not understand that maybe I need time for prayer. Just ask for some of us asking for wisdom. Eh? In this many part of the world, of the of the year please i would like to prioritize i know i said it in january but i've not been doing it father help me lord i want to thank you for your word i want to thank you because there is no single time you have spoken to us without having somebody in mind i thank you for reminding us of how much you are interested in us than the way we are even interested in you i thank you for this kind of love you have towards us that even in our weaknesses you, you are still interested to see us you are interested to have some time with us and for so many times, we keep running, running away. So many times, me in particular, I'll be so busy. 
I know that I need to do this, but I come in, I need to cook, I need to do this, it's time again for work, and before you know it, one day, two days, Lord, I ask for mercy. If you are to take account of my shortcomings, I won't be here. I ask for mercy. Plus, many of my sisters who are joining me are to say that, ah, truly, oh, I can't say I'm there yet, oh, I'm missing it. Lord, I pray that your mercy will be so rich upon us. I pray that you will have mercy upon us. That even the things you have given unto us as a blessing, as an advantage, should not be the very reason why we have deviated away from you. What can we do? What is it we have you have not given unto us? And what we will still need in the future, you need to give it to us. So how, how do we even try? How do we try to marry these two things together? That we get so busy and we don't have time for you. We ask for grace. We pray that you will help us. We pray that you will see the desires of our hearts. And you will grant us wisdom to be able to maneuver. As women, we can be so busy. As women, we have a lot to multitask. The kids are there. The responsibilities are there. But you are the one. You said we should come. There's an exchange that will take place. You say we can hand over your body. You say your own is, is, is light. You carry a, a, a lighter yoke. We ask for the exchange this morning. We lay these bodies on your feet and we begin to ask. Daddy, please. You understand us more better than we even understand ourselves. We ask that you grant us, help us to be more strategic. That in everything we still prioritize you. Because we know if we prioritize you, you will help us with other things. Ah, you can take off our children more than the way we can do. That's the truth. You can help us more than the way we try to help them. Be it our spouse, be it our family members. We are asking for your help. As even as your word has gone forth, we pray that this word will only bear fruit and continue to bear fruit. Even when we miss it, may we not be in a hurry to run away from you. May the enemy not use condemnation to separate us from you. But we ask that we can always run to you who is the loving father. And say, Daddy, we need your help. We need your help, oh God. We pray that you will not even take advantage, you will not take account of the ones we have been doing in order to treat us the way you treat us. There's no mother, no father that will stop doing good things to their children simply because they miss it. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We pray that your word will continue, continually minister in our hearts. And we ask that after today, heaven should be able to recognize that ah, because of this word, oh, I, I like the way this my daughter is doing it now. I can see some changes. I can see some transformation. I can see some effort. That's what God wants to see from us. Not that we are all perfect. No. He just wants to see that heart that is willing and ready. We thank you because we know that you will do us so richly in our hearts and that truly our life shall give you glory. Have your way, Spirit of God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's let's do some twenty. I know we have five minutes. Let's do it. May the Lord answer us in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend us. Amen. Amen. May he send us help from the sanctuary and strengthen us out of Zion. Amen. Amen. May he remember all our offerings and accept our burnt sacrifice. Amen. Amen. May he grant us according to our heart's desires and fulfill all our purpose amen amen we will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our god we will set up our banners may the lord fulfill all our petitions amen amen now we know that the lord says his anointed he will answer us from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand amen amen some trust in chariots and some in horses but we the transforming woman fellowship Remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. They are bowed down and fallen, but we, the transforming woman, fellowship a reason and stand upright. Amen. Amen. Lord, save the transforming woman, fellowship. May the King answer us as we call. Amen. Amen. Um, please, I want to say something before I pray. It just came into my spirit. Please, mothers, even as we train our kids, start when they are young. Start when they are young. Do not use iPads. When you bring your kids to church, please, I beg of you, please, let's learn the right things to do. In the fact that it is normal does not make it right. So if your kid cannot be stable, cannot be safe, so what you do as a mom is you give the child iPad so that iPad can distract the child. So what generation are you raising? Have you ever thought about it? Because what you're thinking is your peace at that moment. You are not thinking of the disadvantage. This child is on the computer all day, all week. And this child comes to church instead to discipline the child, to train the child that this is the house of God. Whether it is Sunday school or not, the child, if the child is getting to that three years, four years, they know what is right and what is wrong. You cannot, please, 
give them iPads to distract them. I see even teenagers, they will be in church, they cross their legs, they hold the phone, they are on Instagram until church is over and their parents are sitting by them. So they, with what you think is, oh, just because I'm dragging them to church is not enough. It's not enough them to be there without hearing what they came in today. So consciously help them not to be distracted because you are going to give accountability how you were able to raise up that child while that child was in your custody. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for today. We give you all the praise and all the glory. I ask Abba Father that even as we have started this new week, the busy week for us, the Transforming Women, the week of our conference, we thank you for what you are set to do. We thank you for the manifestation of your power through your word that is going to work you know, in our lives individually. We thank you because we are so confident that this week is blessed already. We thank you because everything pertaining to us this week is definitely going to be amazing. We thank you for what you are doing and what you will continue to do. We decree and declare the preservation upon everyone connected, related, associated to this ministry. I decree, O oh God, over their lives that even as we have gathered today strong and healthy, that by the time we meet again on Saturday, no one will be missing. Nothing shall be broken. I pray your edge of protection over every life I pray that you will sustain them, you will keep them in good health. Their minds will not wander away. We thank you because we know that you are a God who keeps to your covenant and you keep to your word. And even as we separate from this life fellowship, I pray that the presence of the Lord will never leave us because we cannot do without it. We thank you, Abba Father. Let your word profit us. Let your word bear fruit in our lives. And at the end of the day, I ask that you will take all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. How much I love this family. Thank you so much for joining us this morning Facebook, and thank you so much for joining us Instagram. The Lord bless you. We are definitely going to see you again on Saturday for an amazing women's conference. But for now, remain blessed. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Have a wonderful week.